So I worked on a story about a bodega execution about a 21 year old man who was shot seven times while waiting to pay for water in a bodega in Fordham, the Bronx. This particular neighborhood we're talking about, Fordham, it's experiencing a lot of gang related crime. When I received the assignment, it was on the second day, of what we call a follow. If you're talking about the arc of a story, a follow is the second day or maybe even the third day of a story. And what that means to us, the reporters, is we're gonna kind of slow down the tempo here and we're gonna go deeper. We're gonna find out more about this family. We're gonna find out more about this victim. We're gonna find out more about the circumstances of this 21-year-old's murder. The challenge with this particular story was this individual's mother was very upset, well, obviously upset about what had happened, but she was also very upset at how some prominent police official had mentioned to several outlets that this young man had some kind of gang connection. However, in this particular case, this young man did not have any connection to any gangs or gang members. But at the time, this mother was very, very upset that her son was being painted as a possible gang member. Um, so that was the challenge I faced when I arrived there was uh, I'm, I'm introducing myself. Hello, I'm Kevin Sheehan from the New York Post. And she had just read, you know, how her son was being called a gang member in several different outlets. I had to overcome that. I had to basically give her the opportunity to express this anger that she had. And it was tough because she was surrounded by her husband, uh, loved ones, neighbors, well-wishers. It was almost like walking into a wake and asking to speak to the mother of the dead person. And everybody there was being very protective of her. So it was, it was a challenge. I went to City University of New York Graduate School of Journalism, and I went and talked to one of the professors about how do we deal with seeing terrible things like this? How do we deal with talking to people who have just lost someone? And the professor who was also an, a reporter, she just said, you know, half of this job is about asking a mother what color was the rattle your baby choked on? And she said, if you don't develop that thick skin, this is just gonna eat you up and you're not gonna be able to do it. So you have to walk this line where you develop a thick skin, but you don't lose empathy. You don't become like a robot. This particular story, the way we were able to do an interview with the victim's mother, I empathized with her situation and tried to put myself in her position and find out how she was coping and what she was thinking about and where she was going to go. And that's basically the road in that we used. This was a tough one, trying to do a follow where the family has been poisoned against the media because something came out that was untrue. And now you have to go back and ask for more information. And they really don't want to talk to you. And if you're a robot, if you feel nothing, if you have no empathy for what they're going through, they see that and they recoil from that and they're not going to talk to you.